According to the United Nations, animal agriculture is responsible for nearly 15% of the global greenhouse gas emissions. That's more emissions than all cars, planes, trains, and boats combined. Just in the same way that we need renewable energy so that we can continue lighting our homes without fossil fuels, we also need sustainable animal-free protein sources that can satiate our meat tooth, so to speak, without the need to raise and slaughter animals. The reality is that nearly all meat comes from factory farms, and it is an extremely inefficient way to produce food. Raising animals for food is the leading cause of deforestation, and a huge portion of that is for raising animals or raising crops to feed animals. And it just takes a lot of land to raise animals because it's not just the land that the animals are physically occupying, it's that you have to grow huge numbers of crops to funnel through these animals who are very inefficient at converting those crops into edible meat. If you eat the crops directly, you can use way less land. And what way less land means that we can store more carbon in the soil, and it means that we can leave more land for wildlife. If you think about walking down a supermarket aisle and you pick up a whole chicken from that supermarket, and you put that chicken in your basket, what you should imagine is taking a one gallon bottle of water, twisting the cap off and dumping it onto the floor of the supermarket, and then doing that a thousand more times, because that's about how many gallons of water it takes to get one chicken from shell to shelf. Most of this water is irrigation, right? So you're not talking necessarily about extremely thirsty chickens, although of course they do drink water, but you're talking about essentially irrigating all of that corn and soy for uh, growing all the crops to feed the chickens. It's extremely inefficient, not only to funnel crops through animals and have those animals convert it into flesh, but then you think about all of the enormous resources that are needed to transport those crops all around the country and all around the world. We are cutting down Brazil's rainforest, the Amazon rainforest, in order to provide cropland to grow soy for cattle. But most of those cattle who are consuming the soy aren't living in Brazil, they're living in places like Europe. And so Europe is importing a huge amount of its livestock feed from the Amazon rainforest to feed their cattle so that Europeans can enjoy a high meat diet. Factory farms are great at doing a number of things, of course, creating climate change and gas emissions, creating animal welfare problems, but they're also great at creating lots of waste, lots of waste that can often pollute the local air and waterways. This is one of the reasons, frankly, that you don't see uh, a lot of wealthy communities living around factory farms. You generally see poorer communities living around factory farms, and they are bearing the brunt of all of these problems because you have real serious air contamination issues uh, and water contamination. You're creating a breeding ground for filth and disease. So if we want to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, if we want to reduce the risk of the next pandemic, if we want to prevent wildlife extinction and animal cruelty, what we need to do is enjoy a more plant-based diet and the meat experiences that we have, we can produce them without the need to raise animals. There's no doubt that there's an explosion of interest in plant-based food. At the same time, meat demand is rising. And that's true in the United States, but it's especially true in places like China and India and Brazil and all the places where it's going to matter the most in the future per person meat demand continues to rise. Just like we can use wind and solar and geothermal to replicate what fossil fuels do for us, we can also use animal cells, plant proteins, microbial fermentation to produce meat-like experiences for people while reducing humanity's footprint on the planet.